Hey guys, welcome back to Loose Nuts and Bolts. I don't know if you guys noticed the table of shiny stuff and new stuff, but I'm so glad the wife still loves me and I'm not in the doghouse because I'm still able to order parts for Red Panda. So let's kind of let's kind of look at what we got on the table here. Probably the first thing you guys probably will notice these nice shiny engine mounts from Hasport. They definitely got some really nice build quality to them. I don't know if you guys can see that. But these are using the uh, the bigger, or not the bigger, but the stiffer bushings, the 95As. What makes those a little bit better than the standard ones? Personally, this is gonna be more of a track car. So I probably wouldn't recommend this bushing if you guys were just gonna try to just street with your car. But big thing that kind of caught my attention here is I don't know if you guys can see these little grooves. Yeah, these are machine marks. Basically what that means is these are made of billet aluminum. Basically this was one giant block of aluminum. So it took hours and hours for a machine robot to actually grind this down, to actually get it into this form. But that's not what caught my attention. I'm more into the this. This kind of caught my attention. You know, a little logo, just a little small details. I don't know if you guys can catch that on camera, but they did a fantastic job welding here. I don't know if you can see the dime over dime uh, look. It's probably being covered up by this nice powder coat finished here. So basically, this is basically the passenger bracket here. So when you're looking at the car, you'll kind of see their little, it's kind of like a small little touch they got. But we got this part here, which is basically kind of the dog bone uh, mount here, which they still have the dime over dime, black powder coat. It's a very nice bracket. So most of the Honda Civic guys and Del Sol guys are not gonna understand why this bracket is really that important. But what I, the reason I went to Hasport, just to Hasport alone is, normally the factory one has two of these little ears here. Hasport's actually designed the ear off. What makes that a kind of important in this case is it makes it a lot easier to install so like the guys over at innovative they make some really nice brackets and stuff at least with this they make them in billet same you know polyurethane but what kind of puts what kind of led me to buying the hasport ones is i don't have to buy the factory bracket this is designed very well designed and it's been track tested i mean you can actually watch pinks uh, basically, uh, Brian over at Hasport actually had his eight, you know, CRX running a very similar kit. So the next item we got here is basically the braided steel line from the fuel filter to the fuel rail. Uh, basically, I got this uh, from a guy, uh, basically a company called JB Tuned. They make a lot of custom uh, fuel. Uh, lines, so I was really impressed with the kit here. They got the adapters here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Really nice quality here with the with the stainless steel with the black black look here. And came came with all the washers, the crush washers, and the rubber washers, everything that you would need to install this kit. So the next thing, I'm kind of a computer geek. I, I love looking at circuit boards. And this is a basically a fearable uh, ECU. The, the ECU itself wasn't made by fearable. What, what fearable actually did is they actually, I don't know if you can see this, this is actually a Honda. It's an S300 version three, which the cool thing is I can do the little Bluetooth with the Honda, with the uh, version three, but what uh, Fearable did here for me was they actually customized the socket right here. So this is basically going to be a plug and play. And a nice little feature that I actually pay a little bit extra for, which I'll be honest, for anybody else, I would probably get it too for an extra $25. They basically re they put brand new capacitors on each of the things. To, pretty much this thing's a brand new unit. Even though the case outside is a little, little rough, but realistically, the circuit board has been definitely been checked by these guys. It's been tested. And 
I'll, I'll be honest, if you guys go to their website, you guys can pretty much get any type of, you know, bolt on tuning. You don't even have to go to a tuner, realistically. You tell them what you want, they probably already have it, or they can probably make it for you. So the next thing I got here is basically, I got some custom axles made by Yanaka. They're actually, they're actually still running the deal right now, but... Normally these things run about $250, $300, but right now Yanaka on their website, you better kind of hurry up because they're kind of selling out, is they're running about $180, and that's with free shipping. So I don't have to deal with the custom axles. I would rather, you know, at this point, they simplify my life. And for the, for the price, I can't really argue, and they are rated up to about 250 horsepower to the wheels. So at least for now, I don't plan on doing anything crazy but if I do decide to go a little crazy then obviously we'll have to get some new axles but for the meanwhile for for an NA motor this is definitely you know for most people this is definitely suitable so the next item up here is a product from Chase Bays basically this is going to be going from my clutch master cylinder to the uh, basically to the slave cylinder on the transmission Decided to go with a kind of a more tucked look, especially with this particular car not coming with an H22. I figured I could maybe reroute it in a little bit better direction and just for a better look. And I definitely recommend if you guys are trying to tuck all your brake lines and, and clutch lines, they definitely make some really great products. I mean, just the feel of it and just the look of it. And, it's just a fantastic product. So if you guys go to Chase Base, they can definitely help you guys out. And I don't know if you guys also noticed this right here. Yes, I do like Dragon Ball Z, but it's actually a shift knob. It's actually a pretty cool shift knob. I actually got this on SSD. Got it for about $25 shipped. It, this is a pretty uh, cool little thing. I mean, just the build quality. There's definitely, I don't know if you guys can see, it's definitely, it's not pressed in. It's actually, it was actually molded around it. I don't know if you can see that, but. And the cool part is you can pick the number of stars. So right now they only have stars one through seven available. So I decided to pick number seven to keep myself out of the doghouse because the wife's favorite number is seven. So if she's happy, I'm definitely going to be happy as well. So another part here is basically a generic upper control arm with the adjustable camber here and surprisingly it's actually not that terrible if you actually look at the welds they may not be as great as the Hasport ones where the dime over dimes but realistically it's actually not bad they actually looks like they actually grounded them down a little bit and this powder coating is actually on par with the Hasport and I will be honest, the first shipment that I got with these, they were missing the actual uh, upper ball joints here. But I emailed them and just say, hey, you guys are missing these. And they sent me a whole nother set, you know, just because they, they, you know, they were sorry for the inconvenience. And then the next thing here that you guys see on the table, my buddy uh, over here, actually behind the camera right now, he actually helped me get these uh, pressed in, uh, the new wheel bearings, the new uh, ball joints. And what, I, what I'm looking at here is the actually the ARP uh, lug studs. That will definitely help out on the track. And especially going with an open uh, lug nut from Moteki, uh, that'll definitely, I just like the look and especially the more threads I can grab on the track. I feel like that's just a safer experience for me and then people on the track. And then the next thing you guys see is, you guys saw it in the build video, but here's actually, we actually got it uh, painted up here. So it was the uh, RL calipers from the Acura RL. And then what you're looking at right here is the actual conversion kit from Fast Brakes. And then below that is, we are gonna be using the EBC brake pads and I decided to go with the yellow stuff which a lot of people will say that's a little crazy but this isn't just a normal build this isn't just a normal street car I definitely want you know I want the best brakes I want the best grab I don't 
care if it's an extra dusty. That just means I just need to wash the car a little bit more <laughs> than normal. But uh, also another thing I forgot to mention with the fast brake kits, uh, it actually comes with these rotors here. And the best part is they make them hub centric. I don't know if you guys can see that little ring there. Oh. So these fit on the Civic hubs perfectly. So there's no play. You don't have to worry about it not being centered up. They're perfect. And then right here is just a standard factory uh, fork here. I just put a little bit of just kind of touch up paint on here just to kind of refresh them up. But other than that, they're nothing really special. It's just factory parts just being reconditioned. But what I got here is some uh, Yanaka coilovers, which they're still running a sale over there. They're roughly about 460, 470 bucks. They're normally over $500. So I decided to not go with the race series ones. I decided to go with more of the street, which run the 12 uh, kg fronts and the six back. I decided that would just be a better setup for me because I would rather use a rear sway bar if I decide if I need the, the basically the rear end to kind of oversteer a little bit. I can always adjust that with a sway bar. It's a little bit harder with the spring. But if you actually look at the coil over here, it's actually a really nice piece. I mean, it spins up. They do come pre, uh, basically pre-tensioned from out of the box. Obviously you can always readjust that, but looking at the build quality, they're not, they're fantastic units for the price. Obviously there's always more expensive ones, but we're trying to keep this kind of at a budget level here. And then another cool part is they actually come with new uh, top hat nuts and they come with the nylon, which a lot of people don't realize how important these actually will keep the, them from actually backing out. It's actually a little better than the Loctite personally. But the uh, last item I got on here, yeah, you might, you might want to cap on me or not, but decided to get some build aluminum uh, front lower control arms. They're, they're not really any brand they're just standard eBay ones, but they are the more expensive eBay ones. So I did decide to get a little bit heavier uh, bushings, the polyurethane bushings. Some of the cheaper ones on eBay use a, use a rubber. I personally would rather have the polyurethane. And then another thing I definitely would recommend when you guys decide, if you guys decide to buy the eBay ones, because a lot of stuff on eBay, yes, is junk, it is cheap, but look at the design itself. As you see, there's not too many holes. It's still solid. Don't get the ones that got all the fancy Swiss cheese look. I'll be honest, I, unless you know the manufacturer or it's from a big brand, I wouldn't go with that style. I would go with a more closed and solid look because they are, at least from reviews, they are a lot better. I've actually seen some of the ones with kind of the Swiss cheese look break in half on a track. But they are pretty nice, I mean, for what the price I paid for, so I can't really complain. So basically, I don't know if, I, if you guys were able to see it from, from initially, but we decided to go with, with the TR Motorsports basically from tire rack uh, basically we got the uh, the R triple R tires they are an 8 inch wide tire tire size right here for you guys it's a 205 40 17 inch wheel the reason I really wanted to stick with the 15 inch wheel but due to due to of the, the calipers here uh, the guys over at Fast Break basically told me a 16 inch wheel is the smallest wheel I can run. And the pictures that I've seen online, the clearance is really close. And I'll be honest, I decided I would rather give myself a little bit more gap. And the nice thing is, I was actually able to find a better tire with a 17 inch size for my particular setup. And then the last thing, I don't know if the camera guy can sit back and see, is we got a full size Integra radiator. So basically, it's a two core aluminum. Just like what I was saying with the Hasport with the dime over dime welds. They are really, 
really welded really nicely. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they come with the fans as well. So I'm definitely not gonna have overheating issues. Part of the reason why I decided to go with this particular radiator instead of a half size radiator is typically on the track. This is really a track issue when it comes with the half size. They get a lot of heat soak. And what that means to me and you is they tend to overheat on the track. Basically you can do two or three runs and then you gotta sit on the side and wait. I hate waiting. I don't know if you do, but <laughs> I definitely hate waiting. So at this point, I decided to go with an Integra size. It fits in there, but in a future uh, build video at this point, we will show you guys how to actually mount this in the Del Sol because right now, out of the box, it will not fit. But we will show you guys in a future video on how to basically get that to fit in there. And it does actually fit in there quite nicely. But for today, we are definitely going to be getting the coilovers in. We're gonna get the knuckle in. We're going to get the, the suspension forks. And you guys are finally gonna to get to see the RL calipers on the car once we're done. And we'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Um, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take care of the front suspension. We're also gonna do the, uh, the front brakes and uh, hopefully potentially get it on, put the tires on it and get it on the ground. Um, right now, this is where we got the upper control arm. Of course, this guy, lower control arm, knuckle, and all this other good stuff. Um, you can leave some information about this guy on the, the proper installation, the torque specs, and all that good stuff. So just pay attention to the video, and uh, we are going to go roll right now. All right, guys. Here we are. We are on the passenger side of the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and install the upper controller arms. And just put it right on up through. In this case, we got really lucky and managed to fit the whole way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I made a big mistake already. I didn't attach this guy. This guy needs to be attached. But also, when you attach it, make sure that the open side is facing here. Otherwise, if you have it flipped around, there's a good possibility that your shock may not fit the whole way through, or it may come in contact with that. Also, you might have to put a little bit of a bend to it, just so these points can fit up through the short tower and you won't be fighting it. There we go, bingo, just like that. Yep. A little bit more on this side. Yep, let me get the rubber mallet up in there, so the energy's nice price. Got it. There's a couple more threads on. Next step is the shock. Ouch. Yeah, next step is the shock. Put this guy up in there. Make sure you have the holes. Get your assistant to put in the bolts or the nuts, actually. Now, next thing. Your impact, whatever you want to use. I'm using a 17 millimeter. Remove these guys. Now, when installing a low control arm, the front portion of it, whack, just like so. Come on. There we go. Now, take note the same way you took it off, put the new one on the same exact way, because otherwise you're gonna be fighting with it if you decide to take this bushing, put it right up in here, and then try to put it over top of that, you're gonna fight with it, so make it easy for yourself. Work smarter, not harder. Oh, they probably would have that actually put it on the side. Put the right side facing up. Take a rubber mount, again, so we don't damage anything. Pop it up and just 
Do you do damage to the air? Take the appropriate bolt. I'm on. Gonna go in. There we go. Now I'm not gonna tighten that up just yet. I'm going to line this guy up now. This has still got a little bit of play to it. There we go. We are getting there. Got the nut. So now that now that all two bolts and the nut are on. We've already installed the end links already for the steering rack, so that's off the side for right now. We don't have to worry about that. So it's obviously brand new, nice and shiny, as you can see. We're next, we're going to go in and install the uh, knuckle. And of course, I already have one of the casting nuts right here for the top ball joint. I'm going to drop this guy in. Bring out that right there. Can't forget to drop those things in. If yours didn't come with it, and it didn't come with it, oh well. That's what ours did. Drop it in. Tilt it just a hair. The lines of that bolt. There we go. Bingo. Smooth sailing. Yeah. Let's see here. Yep. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You're good. Now, bring this down just a hair. In business. There we go. Now here's the fun part you guys are probably uh, waiting for. Eh, not quite just yet. My bad. My bad. Need a 14 millimeter for this bolt in the back. This guy in. Of course, the, we let the uh, the nuts on top loose, so we can still move it around like we need to. It makes the job so much easier. Just wrestle with it. Also, just make sure that you got this thing all lined up. Yeah, come on. You got it on backwards. That's why. Oh, it's on back. Oh, duh. I didn't pay. It. I wasn't looking at that. I was looking at it down here. Yeah, that's my fault. I've done these so many times, I should know better than that. Ah, there we go. Bingo. And now, slide it right on in there. Now, there's probably going to be a small little gap between the bottom or the top of the fork and the bottom of the shock. If I don't lose the damn bolt. There we go. Come on. You find that sweet spot. So let's look around. Oh, you know what? It probably would help if I put it on the right side. That's why I'm on flight with myself. Wow. Let's see here. We got that in. We got this bolt. I'll move that guy out of the way. Let's see here. What you looking for? I oh that that uh, magnet trainer right there. Bingo. There we go. Cool. Sweet. Got all the hardware right here. See, it's nice to have stay organized. I think I'm gonna have to push down on. Maybe, hold on. If I get lucky. 
come on. Do a little He-Man. There we go. Bingo! Haha! -ha. Like a champ! Bam! We are looking good. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and install the, the or put up the inner tie or the outer tie rod onto the knuckle just yet, because I want to show you guys how we do the uh, knuckles or not knuckles, not the knuckles, the calipers. And because you actually have to install the bracket before you can even install the uh, rotor. And so here's, of course, the bracket. First up, we're going to basically bolt on right here. He's got the hardware, he's going to get me here shortly. And uh, we also have to put a little bit of thread lock on it. Just a little bit, like one or two dabs on the threads, and you should be good to go. Uh, this uh, washer is not cooperating. Oh, just hand me the hardware. Yeah. We just have to have it flat. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So according to fast breaks, they require you to use red Loctite. Obviously, you don't have to dab it, you know, a million gallons on there, but just enough to cover probably a good five to six threads. All right there. While you're doing that, I will give you a little bit of Loctite on this guy. Now take note. Where this guy goes. Here's the wider portion of it. The wider portion needs to go. I think it's this direction. Yeah, the uh, the wider the wider open opening is for the actual caliper itself. Now, yeah. what I'm getting at is the wider opening right here, because you can bolt it on either direction. So you want to make sure that you have the wider portion of the bracket facing this direction. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so you push the caliper out a little bit. So according to fast brakes, uh, both uh, bolts uh, require Loctite and to be tightened down to 40 foot pounds. Now, I'm just going to use this guy for, uh, wrong size. Looks like we have a, uh, a 19. You get a 19? Yes, 19 will do the trick. Proper tools. What I'm gonna do is for right now, because I don't, I can feel if it's gonna cross thread on me or not. So what I'm doing is, I'm gonna turn it with a ratchet by hand for now, so I can make sure that I'm not gonna cross thread it. Just do it with the wrist. Okay. We know we're good up, up on the bottom. Now what about up top? So we're good up top too. Sweet. Now, just to speed things up a little bit, and I'm not gonna go hard on the impact. Just gonna lightly drop it to draw it in. Because this gun can easily surpass 40 foot pounds. And that's what we have to torque them down to. We already got our uh, torque wrench set to 40 pounds. Now, here's the fun part. Wait for the click. There we go. Heard it. Bingo. Take care of the calipers. 
of four piston calipers. So you might want to put that in here. So. Okay, gotcha. But before we install that, we're actually going to have to push these pistons in a little bit further. So that way when we go to slide the brakes in, it's going to slide in a lot easier. So you want to make sure you do that. Here's the, uh, the two bolts that bolt the four piston caliper to this bracket. Pretty simple to do. It's a good idea to start from the top one first. Oh, we need to get the rotor in. Oh, that we do. We do need to get the rotor in. So before, kind of, we've learned from, from past mistakes in other videos, before we actually do this, we actually need to get the uh, rotor on. Now in this application though too, it is also important to note that you have the rotor going in the correct direction because these are also rotational just like your some of your high performance tires. Now an easy way to help you kind of line this one up is you've got holes here where they've pre-drilled so that way it will adapt to your four lug conversion or to any four lug conversion um, of course use uh, Use a Muteki lug, using Muteki lug studs, or not lug studs, but Muteki uh, lug nuts, just to hold the rotor in place so you don't have to worry about shifting on it. It also helps uh, with the installation of the brake pads when you go to put them on. And don't forget, as mentioned in the other video, you got these rings here. Make sure they are in place as well. Now it's not sitting a whole lot flush right now, but it will sit flush once everything's in place. So don't forget to put those guys in. And those rings are supplied by fast brakes, the hub centric rings. So by tightening up the, uh, the two uh, lug nuts right here, it's actually gonna help us get centered up on that, on that hub centric ring. Nope, it's not gonna even touch it. Oh well, we tried. I can try to damage this thing. Now, here's the good part. Start from the top first, thread it in, get it in a few turns. Once you feel it's got it in, then you're free to let it go and then turn the bottom one in. You should feel a little bit of resistance and that should be about it. Now again, I'm going to use my impact, not just a not to tighten it down, but to get it going. And that's actually the 21 millimeter socket. Right here, sir. Cool, awesome. Oh, wait, that's... That's a uh, half that's inch. Uh, you actually we, need, we need the 21. Yes. You don't have that, so... Actually, I do, right now. Right here. Yep. Okay, that's not quite tightened down yet, even though it's giving me this rep sound. I'm not too worried about it. Again, these are 40 foot pounds as well. And since I've already got my torque on set for that, I'm good to go. Now, these 
are a little bit weird from what I've experienced is you could be tying this thing down like right, right now. It feels like I'm tying it down really tight. There we go. The other side didn't do that for me. The other side, it would, I would turn it and it'd feel like it's getting tight, but I'm not hearing a click sound. And these seem to be doing a lot better. Uh, yeah, so, you know, now it's starting to feel tight. There we go. Get up. See, now it feels like it's it's tight, but it. Okay, I should do it right there. Bingo. Now, the yellow stuff brake pads. These guys. All right. Pay attention to these guys. Obviously. Here. These guys go on the inside. This is the fun and easy part. Now, what I've had to, what I've learned to do with the stubborn brake pads, they want to fit in or slide in properly, and obviously these don't. Just hit with a hammer. I'm lightly tapping. It's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. It slides in perfectly fine. I barely had to even do a full swing on it. And got this guy right here. Same thing. Also, make sure you note that these holes are facing out or away. Because when you slide the pins in, the pins have something to grab onto. And again, rubber mount. Bam, right there. Now, here we have a little locking pin, retainer clip, and of course your pins. Have this guy flipped on over. And we didn't bother painting these just because it's not going to be that scene. You're going to see the wheel more than anything else. You see more of the face of the cow, it doesn't really matter to us. We didn't care too much. So another thing to note on the actual pins themselves, if you actually look, I don't know if you guys can see it, there's actually a little hole. You guys can see that little tiny hole right there. So on this side, make sure you put the hole facing the three right here. That guy is in a little bit too far, but that shouldn't be that big of a deal. Put my hands behind it, just like so. And slide this retainer back in. Slide the whole way across. Let's get the other side in there real quick. Just so it helps out. There we go. Now, take a rubber mallet just because I want to it the rest of the way in and it's not binding up at all and when you do this take note of where those holes are what I've done is to make sure that these holes go in the right direction where I want them to go I basically take the pin and turn it simple as that you don't have to break out any uh, special pick or whatever you want to use just simply put this guy on in and you are going to be good to go. <laughs> Trying to get it in there without getting my glove pinched. There we go, bingo. Just like so. And there you have it. That is how a Properly installed, Acura RL caliper gets stalled on and to any of your Honda that you're trying to do a conversion like this on. And now you are free to remove these guys. And that is about it for this uh, portion of the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for uh, more content and comment below and give us a thumbs up.